Should we get into the, the lap throwing then? Because it seems like we're, froth- we ought to we're frothing at the bit to go there. <laughs> so, Mark, in terms of a, a weapon to be used, I think at the time was looked at maybe as being slightly anti-football, but I, I look back on that now certainly and think, that's bloody great. It's like something so simple and no one could deal with it. I think that's how a lot of people look back on it. You know, at the time, if we were playing against you, and we were scoring from a throw, and it was you know the, the worst thing in the world. That is not football, and, and the rest of it. But from neutrals, they loved it because all these great Premier League defenders couldn't deal with just a ball chucked into the box. It was crazy, but they couldn't. Like in the Championship, when we come up, Delap used the throw in, but nowhere near as much as he did in the Premier League. Well, that's because there was so many Championship centre backs. Used to th- th- their bread and butter. Yeah. Their bread and butter was oof. Get it out of there. Exactly. So the most like prehistoric of tactics, just get it in the mixer, you know, just caused all sorts of. It's absolutely phenomenal. We used to do the clap like the, the sort of the, the precursor to the Icelandic <laughs> clap, really, <laughs> like just the build every time we had a throw in, and it wasn't even like it was the edge of the box throw. Like on the halfway line, sometimes he would chuck it in because Pulis narrowed the pitch and everything, so he could literally like be a, a foot into his into the opposition half and get a throw in into the box and send up the centre half. It's absolutely phenomenal. What a fun. It's like the Coliseum, just waiting for the thumb down or the thumb yeah. up when the clock starts <laughs> going, oh, seen Gomez, now the thumb's down. <laughs> uh, Rob, you're, you're a man who appreciates the beautiful side of football. So yes. where does the, the Rory de Lapp throw in, how does that sit with you? Well, I love it. I think maybe slightly for the novelty value, but I think what the thing with direct football, which maybe gets it gets so slaughtered by everyone, but actually, when it's done really well, it's just so fun because everyone tries to play the same way nowadays. They try to keep it nice and it makes it looks nice, keep things short. When actually, if you've just got a guy who can wang it in the box and no, like we say, no one had a clue how to deal with it, it's really effective and it's really fun to watch. And just yeah. watching actual like international class defenders <laughs> on 100 grand a week not have a clue how to deal with this man just throwing a football <laughs> is just beautiful, really. It, it always felt to me like you were watching... FA Cup third round. Yeah. You know, we had Newport County against Arsenal or whatever. And there was always this element of, I'm not sure what's going to happen here because this is an absolute leveller. This changes everything. You, you can be paid 50, 60 grand a week. You can have white boots. This is the 90s, remember. <laughs> and you, you can be playing lovely stuff on a, on a carpet every week. But once you start playing against Stoke and that ball comes in and it's windy at the Britannia, that wind swirling around, it is a leveller. And that is what I think makes football beautiful. I agree that the... The actual short stuff is great to watch and the you know, the last 10 years have changed everything. But the beauty of football for me is there's still a, a, a goal at the end of it and that is to score more than your opponent and to keep out ones at your end. And it turns out that there's multiple ways to skin a cat and we Stoke were, we, picked we, this way of chucking a ball in. But we were having like a chance every two minutes. Unbelievable. <laughs> I absolutely stand by I love it. I love it. 